Okay, guys, I'm really excited about this test. So, five liter Ford guys, what's your favorite performance modification? Headers, intake, camshafts, cylinder heads? How about nitrous? What about a turbo? Well, in this video, we test them all individually so we can find out the performance gains from each. Let's get started. In this video, I ran a ton of performance modifications for a five liter Ford. Before we could do that, we needed a test motor. Now, our test motor was basically a stock 5 liter Ford, and by basically stock, I mean it wasn't stock. <laughs> it actually was a rebuilt 5 liter Ford short block. All we did was change the connecting rods and the pistons. Now, we still had a 509 rod, but it was forged, and we still had a flat top piston, but it was also forged. Now, the reason I put flat top pistons in, or forged pistons, was because I wanted additional valve relief so we could run even bigger camshafts. Now, this XE274 that we end up running would probably fit but it gets to be tight when you have more duration and a big valve head. So what we did with this combination was we first ran it in stock trim with shorty headers. And by stock, I mean stock throttle body, stock HO intake, stock E7TE heads, and basically stock compression in that short block. Now, the change in the short block, the forged internals, basically had no effect on power. I mean, this combination with all that stock components made the same power as almost every junkyard motor I've ever gotten out of the wrecking yard. So it was a good starting point. We ran it stock with shorty headers. Then I installed long tube headers. Then I installed a GT40 intake. Then I installed what might be my, my most favorite camshaft for a five liter Ford, the XE274HR. So we installed that camshaft. Then we installed a set of ported heads. Then I installed a different intake an extrude hone ported Holly Systemax intake. Then we ran nitrous. <laughs> then we installed a single turbo kit. Now, that's a lot of stuff to get through in one video, so let's get going. To get things started, we equipped our five liter Mustang. I remember I told you it had four drawage and four pistons, but it had all the stock stuff on it. So stock intake, throttle body, cylinder heads, all that. The one thing that we did do is put valve springs in the stock heads so that we could put the camshaft on with the stock head. So they definitely needed a valve upgrade, but that shouldn't change power very much. We ran these with shorty headers, and it's also important to note that shorty header upgrade on a five liter Mustang on an otherwise stock five liter Mustang worth almost nothing. They look better um, because they're not pinched for bolt access from the factory but they're worth almost no power. So on the shorty header equipped five liter Mustang, it produced 252 horsepower and 306 foot pounds of torque. So you had a little funky kind of little dual torque peak there. And remember we test ours with electric water pump, no accessories, no air inlet on the throttle body. We test it a little bit colder and with an optimized tune. So here's what happened after we replaced the shorty headers with long tube headers. And these were um, basically hooker Fox chassis, five liter Mustang chassis headers. And I want you to note that the gains were more impressive down low than they were at the top. Because headers, a lot of people think that headers are about improving the flow. Oh, those headers flow better. That's not what happen what's happening. Long tube headers actually provide a scavenging effect which improves power. Basically, they are, they are tuned to enhance power in a given RPM range. And the length of, and the length and the style of the header um, determines what they're tuned for. But on this particular combination with the stock cam and everything else being stock, the headers were worth quite a bit of power. Our peak numbers jumped up to 261 horsepower and the torque was up to 321 foot-pounds. We've got a big gain here in the 3000 RPM range. So we'll go through one more modification before we switch over. And this was to replace the factory HO intake manifold with the famous GT40. And this was actually a GT40, a tubular version, which we <laughs> still have one of those at West Tech, oddly enough. So here's what happened when we installed the GT40. Peak numbers were up a fair bit. You can see big gains out here to 279 horsepower. And even the peak torque was up just a little bit to 323 foot-pounds. But we did uh, lose a little bit compared to the factory HO manifold, which is kind of typical down low. So here is our stock motor with headers and a GT40 intake. Now let's take a look and see what happened after we installed our camshaft. Okay, we had our modified five liter with our GT40 intake and our long tube headers making 279 horsepower, 323 foot pounds. You'll remember we started out here with our stock stuff, so we'll get rid of that. 
Now, here's what happened after we installed my favorite camshaft, that Extreme Energy 274 HR cam from Comp Cams. Lots of other guys have that a similar profile and it works really well. I've run it NA with turbos, blowers, nitrous, everything. So here's what happened when we installed the cam. You can see, picked up power everywhere. And it's important to note that with this camshaft, we were still running the stock head. So if we had a better cylinder head, the gains from the camshaft would be even more because it, let's face it, <laughs> that stock U7 TE head, iron head, not great. I mean, I think it only flows like 155 CFM. They're not great. So, but we are up to 312 horsepower and peak torque was up as well by quite a bit, up to 349 foot-pounds of torque. So, obviously, since we had a decent intake, we had a good camshaft, our short block was good, and we had those wimpy stock cylinder heads, what we really needed to do now was install a decent set of heads. So here's what we did. We put a set of RHS aluminum heads on this thing, and look at that. Another big jump in power. And again, and we'll go over this in the conclusion, it's important to note that if we were to swap this, <laughs> put the heads on first and then the camshaft, the, grains, the gains would be greater from the camshaft and less from the cylinder head. But any set of heads that you put on here, any kind of ported head, and I did a test on probably 20 or 30 different five liter cylinder heads on four different motors. Long ago for Muscle Mustangs and Fast Forwards, I need to do a video on that because I tested basically every single head that I could possibly get my hands on. There's a lot of good data there, so I'll bring that up sometime and do a video on it. But anyway, with our ported heads, the power output was up to 354 horsepower. Peak torque was up also to 378 foot-pounds of torque. So our final combination, our final test, we need to take a look and see what happens after we replace our GT40 intake with an extrude hone ported, and if you're not familiar with the guys from extrude hone, they basically force a viscoelastic elastic polymer, basically it's like silly putty, impregnated with silicon carbide, and they force it back and forth through the passages, and because it flows like a fluid, it finds the parts where there's resistance, and it ports those and improves the flow, and it works pretty cool in a lot of instances, especially in these long runner deals. But here's what happened when we installed our Holly Systemax intake, Pow, big jump in power. So we jumped all the way up to 395 horsepower. Peak torque just kind of shifted over, but it was up to 380 foot-pounds of torque. But if you'll notice, even down here below 4,000, that intake manifold lost power and torque compared to the GT40 on this combination. But here we are with our modified combination, making nearly 400 horsepower and 380 foot-pounds of torque. So now it's time for some power adders. Our modified five liter was now making close to 400 horsepower, 495 horsepower, 300 or 395 horsepower, 495 would be nice. 395 horsepower, 380 foot-pounds of torque. And if you remember, this is where we came from. This is where it all started out, down around 250. So we've made some good modifications, uh, good power gain so far. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we installed nitrous. So put a Zex wet EFI kit on it, basically a single fogger nozzle mounted in front of the throttle body uh, in an inlet tube, just spraying both nitrous, combining both nitrous and fuel, spraying them directly into our long runner extrude hone ported Holly intake manifold. So here's what happened when we installed our nitrous. And as we expect from nitrous, we got big, <laughs> some big power gains. The power output jumped to over 500, 510 horsepower. And this was with jetting to supply about 100 horsepower. Uh, we did uh, tune this thing. Uh, we only took away two degrees of timing on this deal. And uh, you can see it's starting to get a little bit rich out here at the top. Uh, we could do additional tuning with the EFI, which, by the way, in this case, we were running a uh, fast XFI management system on this thing back when we were running this. Now we could have taken away fuel out with the EFI system at the top here to probably improve that and make that go nice and straight, nice and flat. Or more tuning with the, um, with the nitrous. We could have taken away um, nitrous fuel or fuel pressure to try to improve that. But that, these were our gains with the nitrous. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we add our single turbo kit. So. And as you can see, <laughs> turbo stuff even better. 
So this was our single turbo from HP Performance back, back in the day. It had, this one had a Turbonetic 72 millimeter turbo. We had 36 pound injectors and we were running, I think made 622 horsepower and torque was way up as well. 637 foot pounds of torque. And I'll go ahead and uh, we'll show you what the boost curve looked like on this. But, and we'll talk about the peak boost and stuff. But this thing was, uh, we could run more boost. We had more power left in that turbo, but basically this is, you know, <laughs> this is getting up near the, I'm gonna break limit of, of the factory block. Now we've run more than this and had no problem, but the, the problem with the turbo stuff on a five liter block is uh, we haven't broken them with centrifugal superchargers actually, because they have a rising boost curve and they make the power up at the top of the RPM range. So if you're running it out at 6,500 and you're running 10 pounds there, it doesn't seem to hurt it as much as running 10 pounds down at 3,000 or 3,500 RPM. And we did a bunch of stuff with the guys from HP Performance back in the day and they ended up splitting one of their blocks because we were trying to get the thing to go 10 just bolting on their, their turbo kit um, and we managed to do that. But then we also ran that same turbo kit after modifying the motor with heads, cam, and intake and we made a lot of power <laughs> and the thing ended up splitting the block which, you know, that happens on occasion. But this combination worked really good and it worked really good. It shows that we, if you modify the motor, then you add boost. Good things happen, lots of power. Now let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did you think about our test on all these performance modifications on a five liter Ford? Now for me, I like going through all of these things individually so we can find out what each component is really worth. The problem with that procedure <laughs> is that it doesn't really tell us in absolute terms. You see, if we were to run the camshaft test after the cylinder head test, the camshaft would be worth even more power and the cylinder heads would be worth even less power. If we were to put the ported intake manifold on instead of the GT40, things would be different. So know that, I mean, the more powerful the test motor, the greater any single change will often be. So don't get caught up in that. Just know that each performance modification that we made obviously improved the power. Again, if we ran the headers at the end, we'd see even more power. And also here's a note. Guys that are putting shorty headers on their five liter don't expect much power at any power level. I mean, I've run shorty headers a ton of times, <laughs> probably 15 or 20 times. And every time we run them, they're only worth about this much power. But if you are gonna put shorty headers on, don't get equal length shorties. Don't worry about that. There's no extra gain. All there are are headaches with the plug wires. You're definitely gonna burn them. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Help me out, guys. I'll keep testing.